Yo, 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 what's going on, good people? It's your boy, Three Stacks in this thing, baby, representing Team Kings of Games. And today I'm coming at you guys with an update for my Burning Abyss deck profile. So I really have enjoyed Burning Abyss since their initial inception into the game. Uh, I have tried a lot of different variants with it. One of my favorites, all-time favorites, is the PK Fire variant. I just really, I still love it. And I, I really have never stopped playing it. That's still how I play my deck. But this time, I'm just trying something different. Uh, shout outs to all the people that are hating on Fire Lake, right? I just wanted to give a shout out to them real quick. Um, but we're doing, uh, ba basically, we're doing an Orcus variant of Burning Abyss. I really like how they play together and how well they're meshed. Uh, it just kind of does a lot more than burning abyss are able to do on their on their own even though they're able to link spam and all that and they really have similar uh, similarities between the two uh there's a lot of weaknesses that bas have that are able, you're able to compensate with the orcas and also it just really enables you to go for a huge push even on very minimal resources like whenever you're in that scenario where you oh i all i can do is just make a dante just having those same resources that you can use to make a dante can essentially just kill your opponent um so i really do i really do think that it elevates the ceiling of ba and even when cherubini comes out i think this is probably going to be one of the better uh variants of burning abyss is the orcas i'm going to go back to pk fire personally but i really want to showcase this to you guys uh and it's been a while since we've uh, updated burning abyss and burning abyss just needs some love i really like them as a deck i don't like that they look evil i don't look i don't like demonic looking cards but i do respect the deck so let's hop into the main deck we're starting off with three finish rhino warrior boy oh boy those super rares are gonna spike in price baby cherubini comes out man this is gonna be like a 40 dollar card mark my words and then a one tour guide these are essentially the best normal summons of your deck uh really finish rhino warrior is so incredible because he just mitigates the biggest issue that burning abyss have always had being played with anything that's not them or just getting kaiju anything like that the deck just really struggles when you have monsters on the field that are not burning abyss so that's why this card is just so important and that's why i really am just an avid fan of libic uh, just solving that huge problem that for me is the most i guess you could say not necessarily irritating but it's one of the most aggravating weaknesses of this deck is the fact that back in the day it was really hard to play burning abyss with other strategies because just the bas inherently kill themselves when you don't have uh, when you have a monster that's not BA, but this card just solved that problem a long time ago, and it should never not be played in this deck at three. You've got to play three of it. It's incredible. It's another BA, essentially. It's the best BA. It's honorary, and Tour Guide is a god card. You can make Boar Sword with Tour Guide when your hand's correct, uh, and then we have, for the rest of the BAs, I decided to um cut down on two offs, cut down to two offs, so um it was to mitigate the major issue, which was drawing too many of the same name, because you can only use one effect and only once, but also at the same time, keeping it kind of compact to make room for other cards, but still playing enough BAs, because I like my BAs a lot. Uh, so we have two Skarm, uh, we have two copies of Farfa. I love, and I mean love Barbar a lot. Barbar is insane, dude. I play two, and you know what? I really started playing two Barbar, um, and I'll tell you a, a funny little quick story. Every time I have ever tried to go for Barbar or in any scenarios when Barbar was relevant in that particular matchup, I had always milled it early. Like, I'm, I have a curse with milling Barbar turn one before I even have valid targets to resolve them. And then you're like looping Sir and Dante, and then you're like, oh, Barbar's coming up. Oh, wait, dang, I don't have a Dante to get Barbar back. And I just really need Barbar right now. And it's like having that second one in deck kind of just mitigates that issue that I have personally. So I play two Barbar for me because I just have bad luck. You shouldn't play two if you don't want to. Uh, and then we have two copies of Libic. I really like Libic a lot too because, again, he solves that same issue that Phoenix Rhino Warrior solves where you're able to get your BA names on field and you don't have to worry about the restriction that they have as their basic, just the mechanic of the deck, I would say. Uh, and then we still have Graph and Sir, um, Alec, and also Calcab. So um, as far as the BA goes, uh, we're playing 12 BAs. Uh, you know, technically these count as BAs, but for the actual names, we're playing 12. I felt very comfortable playing 12. I, I always believe that you should definitely play more than like eight or nine. Like um, there are certain BA names that I normally do play, especially in my PK Fire List with the Fire Lakes. Yeah, baby. Fire Lakes is a good card. Stop saying it's bad. It's a great card. You think Fire Lakes bad? I just don't understand. Uh, but anyways, yeah, for the going second, like the second Burning Abyss and all that, I get it. Everybody wants to play second BAs. Everybody worships Tom Rose and like, I get it. You want to play it that way, play it that way. But I like playing my BAs the way I like playing it. Uh, but the 12 has really worked out well for me just for testing this list. Because um, what I found was you do want to open with BAs, but um, you don't want to open with too many. Because you need other extenders. Because uh, with the BAs, they are extenders. 
essentially because they're free special summons. But once you start getting deeper into your combo and you're digging in your deck and start you start going off with the Orcas, you can't drop any more BAs unless you have Phoenix Rhino and you happen to still have them on the field. So that's kind of an issue where they become bricks, essentially, once you're deeper into your combo. So you don't want to open with too many. You still want to make Beatrice. Like, I make Beatrice before I do the combo if I'm able to. But if I need to use my BAs to start the combo, that's understandable. But you really just want to play just enough to where you're opening consistently with one or two. Um, and then next up, the portion of the deck that um, I guess everybody's going to cry about. Um, there's a lot of Danger Crybabies in our Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Um, everybody just, well, not everybody, but a lot of people just don't like Dangers. I like Dangers. Uh, we have three copies of Nessie, we have three copies of Suchinoko, and three copies of Jackalope. So essentially, these are the best dangers of playing the deck, these two right here. You still like Nessie because um, she searches these out, and at the same time, she allows you to establish bodies on the board, which is really important because you can make your BAs, uh, you can make your Dante using the BAs or other level 3 extenders like these, for example, and then you can use the dangers to finish your combo up just having that extra body on field or the extra two bodies so that way you can uh basically link off of dante get an extra resource back make your nightmare that same card you got off dante you could just use that as the fodder for your mermaid if you want to uh but yeah just the nine dangers i was considering playing a bigfoot just for the utility purposes uh when it comes up where you just need to be able to search out and out to a floodgate and out to anything that's in your way like vanities fiend you can still play dangers under vanities but just being able to just constantly reveal Nessie until you get her and then get Bigfoot and then pop the Vanity so you can play. It's just clutch, but it hasn't really came up. And I think really it's because I haven't played this deck at like a YCS or Regionals yet. It's just, it's on the list. Uh, so next up, uh, getting the dangers out the way. Uh, so the dangers are going to be another pile right here. Uh, we're going to keep Finish Rondo Warrior here because he's a god card. Uh, we have two Psychic Willeter and uh, one Tracker. Now, honestly, I, I just... I'm not playing Brio, so there's no reason to play this. Even though he's a tuner, there's really no reason to play this over Tracker. I'm just playing this because he looks cool. They do basically the same thing in this deck. Trust me, they really do. You're not playing Synchro, so the effects don't really matter that much for the simple fact that you're only going to be using them the XYZ or Link Summon. So I'm really just playing these because he looks cool. So if you're going to say like some crazy comment, like, you're not playing with Synchro, so why are you playing that? I already explained it. Uh, so next up, for the Orcus portion of the deck, we're playing two copies of nightmare and uh, keep in mind there's still synergy with dante milling your orcas so you can kind of accidentally i guess you could say upstart into the combo without even making mermaid which is kind of clutch but um it's not going to come up that much but we have uh two nightmares one heart pour one skeletor and also one world wand so the orcas are really compact you definitely want to play two nightmare um not only because it's an issue when you draw it but just you're playing burning abyss you're gonna mill cards that you don't want to mill sometimes and it just happens that's how it is uh like i've had situations where i've literally just milled like three ash blossoms and i was like oh yeah we're not seeing that for the rest of the duel uh and then i do play the zephyros because i like the uh the ability that zephyros provides interacting with the danger specifically to bounce a danger to reveal it and special it again is the embodiment of an extender it gives you more fodder for your orcas plays and also in awkward scenarios you're able to use this to make your time d free door or you're able to use this to link climb into your boar sword uh, for the phantomites i play one ancient cloak and one boots you definitely need to play more than one because you're playing bas again you're going to mill cards that you don't want to mill sometimes so having the extra target for uh, Rusty Bardish to be able to sin is really important. That's it for the monsters. No hand traps. Uh, you don't really need hand traps to play in modern Yu-Gi-Oh this day. Uh, some decks like play hand traps, and I feel like I understand if you have space and there's really no other cards you could think of. Like I, I see like Salman Greats play a lot of hand traps. I get it, but some decks just don't need hand traps because their engine is so powerful that it's able to play through a lot of interruptions. It's able to put out. A lot more than um, some of the decks can actually stop or keep up with those decks can actually get away with not playing hand traps because you can kind of let your opponent play let them establish the board they were trying to make and you can still break it without using hand traps to simplify the game state uh, so for spells we have three allure of darkness uh, one foolish burial one card destruction these are all really great cards uh, utility foolish is the best utility card in the deck uh, you send any BA you want any orcas you want uh any pk you want black wings zephyros the elite it's just really good i don't want to play seca i've never played seca and burning abyss i never will i just i don't like seca ba i like fog blades i like uh allure darkness i like foolish i like monster reborn and i freaking love fire lake uh so we have orchestrated babel and the one rank of magic launch 
as part of your combo because you want to make Azathoth with this deck. I don't care that Azathoth's not fair. I don't really, it doesn't bother me that other people don't like it. For me personally, everybody's playing so cheesy these days and they're just not being fair. I feel like, why should I be fair if they're not being fair? So yeah, I'm going to play Azathoth. I'm going to lock my opponent out from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Because they would do the same thing for me. They wouldn't give me the respect, so why should I? You know, then that's just how you got to play, man. You can't really play honorable anymore these days. Uh, if you, the only way you're playing honorable for me personally is like if you're playing strikers or greats, they're honorable decks. They're not doing anything just degenerate. But Danger Thunder, you as thought them, and you don't even feel bad about it. <laughs> the extra deck, uh, two Dantes. This is against my religion to play two Dantes. Um, I love playing three. I don't care about anybody's telling me, oh, you got to play two. You got to play two. Like, stop trying to tell people how to play their deck, honestly. Play your deck how you want to play yours, and everybody else is going to play theirs the way they want to play it. People have different mindsets, different play styles. The reason why I'm playing two Dante, though, is honestly because the extra deck just is super tight. These are the only Burning Abyss cards that I can play my extra deck. And in fact, everything else is just part of the combo. Everything else is just links. It's all just links. Oh, yeah, and then these XYZs, too. Uh, these are just part of your um, your Orca shenanigans because uh, you're making Azathoth like nobody's business because you've just resolved a mermaid. And if they don't stop the mermaid, there's more than often a very low chance of them winning after that. Uh, so these cards really good uh, Dante is, is still incredible it's a great card um, I really do like playing three like I said but it just it couldn't really um, fit in the extra deck uh, so now for our links we have Galatea we have Longaritsu and Orcustrion. I'm a huge avid fan of the Orcus and their link monsters I think that all three of them are incredible I feel like if you're playing Orcus even as an engine and you're not playing all of these there is something that you're going to be missing you're going to feel like something's missing and there's going to be a scenario that comes up where you're like if only i had this if only i had this if only i wasn't playing just galatea herself and that's it like these are really good removal that doesn't target or doesn't doesn't destroy the ability to skill drain your opponent's monsters and make their attack and defense zero uh the protection that these provide is just incredible uh so yep the orcus links they're really good cards you guys trisbania because uh, we do not like back row decks at all uh, summon Sorceress and Rusty Bardish for our Link 3s. Uh, we have the Nightmare Package, just a really small Nightmare Package uh, just to get into your Mermaid. Phoenix is the best one for me personally. I just uh, I really like being able to out back row and floodgates before I do the Mermaid play. And then, you know it, Boar Sword, because Boar Sword is super easy to make in this deck. Even without Orcus, Burning Abyss are really good at making it. If you play the Link Climbing cards like um, Edgent Sabers, like, um, you know... Gallus, the Star Beast, you know, you can play the uh, the uh, Wyver Buster and um, C Collapse Serpent, you know, you can play Destrudo, Mare Mare. There's a lot of things you could do with Burning Abyss. There really are, they're a very, very flexible and adaptable deck. Uh, there's too many ways to play them for anybody to just say this is the only way to play it. That's one thing that kind of just, I just, I don't think is true. Um, but yeah, definitely let me know what you guys think of this deck profile. If you guys enjoyed it, if you guys uh, feel like this is, um, something that could work out or if you see some flaws i don't mind point them out it's totally fine i could take the constructive criticism um also for anybody that was already like you know trying to do bring abyss orcas i think that you're very smart and you're kind of you're catching on to the synergy that these two engines have so anybody that's already playing bring abyss orcas shout outs to you because you get it like it works it really does and um if anybody you know didn't know which everybody should know it works it, it's incredible i think that really this variant is a lot more powerful than the variant with Sekka's Light and Kaiju's. That's just me, though. You know, that's me personally. But again, God bless you guys. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. Stay tuned for future content. And you guys have a beautiful day, all right? And stay positive. Peace out, yo.